Well, my colleagues, Minister Sergei Lavrov, dear Sergei, and colleagues from the media, I'm very pleased today to receive my good colleague, good friends, the Foreign Minister of Russian Federation, Sergei Lavrov. Sergei, welcome back to Jakarta. The last visit by Minister Sergei to Jakarta was in 2017. And this visit is a part of a series of visits by Foreign Minister Lavrov to countries in the region. And in addition, this afternoon, Minister Lavrov and I will co-chair the special ASEAN-Russia Foreign Ministers meeting. Indonesia is now currently the coordinator for ASEAN-Russia partnership. This meeting is held in commemoration of the 25th anniversary of ASEAN-Russia partnership. Colleagues from the media, Russia is one of the most important partners for Indonesia, particularly in the Eastern and Central Europe. Our discussion was candid and productive. We continue to discuss the preparation for President Putin's proposed visit to Indonesia while waiting for the opportune time for the visit. We hope during the visit by President Putin, both countries can sign the agreement on strategic partnership between Indonesia and Russia. This agreement will create a new and strong foundation to elevate the two countries' relations. And moreover, in our bid to further intensify Indonesia-Russia relations, we just signed the plan of consultation between our two ministries of foreign affairs for the period of 2021-2023. Colleagues from the media, during the meeting, I specifically raised four areas of bilateral cooperation. Let me start with the first, on health cooperation. Strengthening health cooperation remains the highlight in all meetings, both bilateral and multilateral meetings. During the meeting, we discuss how we strengthen cooperation in the short term and in the long term. In the short term, of course, the issue concerning vaccine procurement, therapeutic and diagnostic remains the priority. Russia conveys its commitment to strengthen this short-term cooperation. All cooperation for sure will comply with the guidance from the two countries' health authorities as well as with the WHO. And for your information, colleagues, that last month, the head of Indonesia Food and Drugs Administration, BPOM, visited Russia to directly observe the facilities for production of Sputnik V vaccine. Since the very beginning of the pandemic, Indonesia and Russia have worked closely to address it. President Joko Widodo and President Putin conducted phone conversation in March 2020 concerning the cooperation to deal with the pandemic. Russia also donated antiviral drugs and medical equipment to Indonesia at the early stage of COVID-19 outbreak. This cooperation will strengthen through MOU on health cooperation between the two countries that is being finalized at this moment. This MOU will become a foundation for health cooperation in the medium and long term, including the plan to jointly produce vaccine between Indonesia and Russia. The second issue we discuss is on the trade and investment cooperation. Indonesia and Russia has trade target of 5 billion US dollar in 2020. We understand that such target have not been met among others due to the pandemic. Therefore, we agreed to strengthen our commitment to elevate our mutually beneficial two-way trade. How do we achieve this? Among others through maximizing the working group on both countries in priority sector such as agriculture, marine and fisheries affairs, and trade investment and industry. Accelerating the finalization of pending documents on economic cooperation, among others MOU on transportation, agriculture, fisheries, and a creative economy, and addressing issues that hamper trade priority products for two countries. As an additional effort 
beyond the bilateral context, I also encourage the negotiation of free trade between Indonesia and Eurasian Economic Union with population of 450 million people. On investment, I have shared with Minister Lavrov on the law on job creation as well as the establishment of the Indonesian Investment Authority. I encourage Russian companies to invest in Indonesia, especially infrastructure, digital infrastructure, health care, and logistics. The third bilateral issue that was discussed is on education cooperation. At the moment, we have 600 Indonesian students in Russia. I convey appreciation for Russia to, to, to protect the health and well-being of the Indonesian students and national in Russia. And I also convey the request of, for access of hundreds of Indonesian students to Russia, of course, by abiding to strict health protocol. And I also welcome the Russia offer for diplomatic education cooperation for the year 2022. Fourth, we briefly discussed cooperation in the field of security. I emphasize the importance of cooperation in the field of cybersecurity. We have finished discussing two cooperation documents on this area, namely joint statement of head of state regarding this issue and agreement on the international information security. The draft is expected to be signed soon. Colleagues from the media, a part of the bilateral issue, we also discuss regional and international issues of common concern. Regarding Myanmar, I again emphasize the importance of following up on the five point of consensus. This required the commitment of Myanmar military to cooperate with other ASEAN member countries to follow up the five point of consensus. And I had requested Russia to support the implementation of the five point of consensus. Another issue I raised was regarding the Indo-Pacific cooperation. <coughs> And Indonesia re-emphasized the spirit of the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific with underscore inclusive cooperation, transparent and open. Indonesia and ASEAN countries emphasize the importance of concrete cooperation that benefits the people. Indonesia will appreciate Russia's support for the Indo-Pacific cooperation. In addition, we also discussed Indonesia presidency at the G20 and I'm very glad to hear from my colleague, uh, Sergei, of Russian support to the presidency of Indonesia uh, on the G20 next year. That is all from me, and now I would like to invite Your Excellency, Minister Sergei Ravrov, to deliver his statement. Sergei, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Retna. Ladies and gentlemen, the representatives of the media, we are very much satisfied with the exchange of uh, views and opinions uh, on a broad range of issues of mutual interest which we just uh, finalized. Indonesia is one of the key partners of Russia, in, uh, especially in Asia and Pacific region. Last year, we commemorated the 70th anniversary of diplomatic relations, and they continue to develop in a very constructive manner. Today, we uh, highly appreciated the bilateral uh, cooperation. We established confidential political dialogue, including on the highest level. We strengthen contacts uh, in the areas of security, trade, investment, humanitarian cooperation, and uh, others. Uh, we coordinate our activities in international affairs and decided today to uh, continue to intensify all those areas of our inter interaction, like my uh, good friend and colleague said we are finalizing a declaration which would register the existing fact that our relations are uh, the relations of strategic partnership and hopefully uh, soon uh, our leaders can meet and uh, sign this important document. We discussed our economic cooperation in depth. We are satisfied that in spite of coronavirus infection, uh, the first four months uh, of this year saw considerable increase uh, of the volume of trade, uh, almost by 25 percent. 
and we confirmed our intention uh, to continue to diversify the, the trade, uh, including uh, through the uh, expansion of our cooperation in uh, high-tech uh, products. As uh, very promising areas, uh, we mentioned energy, uh, oil and gas, transport infrastructure, uh, civil aviation, machine building, computer and uh, telecommunication technologies, and the halal industry. Uh, we support the uh, early convening of 13th meeting of the Russian-Indonesia Joint Commission on Trade, Economic and Technical Cooperation, and we strongly supported the negotiations which are being launched between Indonesia and the Eurasian Economic Union uh, on the uh, creation of the free trade area. We agreed to expand our uh, links uh, in the area of education, and I uh, uh, can assure you that all the uh, problems which are being experienced by the students who study in Russia, not only from Indonesia, from many other countries, uh, they would be resolved as uh, we move to normalize the uh, situation with uh, coronavirus infection in <laughs> countries of origin and, of course, in the Russian Federation. We would welcome, uh, as soon as the epidemiological situation permits, to resume the practice of days of Indonesian culture in Russia and will be assisting the embassy of Indonesia in Moscow in all uh, possible way. We also would like to promote cooperation between uh, scientific communities of the two countries, uh, cooperation between the regions of Russia and Indonesia, uh, and the cooperation between our two foreign ministries, including the training facilities of uh, my ministry, Diplomatic Academy, and Institute of Education and Training of uh, Indonesian friends. Uh, we, uh, as you uh, witnessed, signed plan of consultations uh, between our two ministries for the next two years, uh, which certainly uh, indicates uh, the uh, intention uh, to deepen coordination and to make it uh, more uh, specific. Yeah, of course, uh, we discussed at length uh, the cooperation and fighting the new coronavirus infection. The positions are uh, basically the same. We are convinced, both Russia and Indonesia, that vaccines must be accessible for the entire international community, and we support respective initiatives of the United Nations, of the World Health Organization, uh, we confirmed our readiness to closely cooperate with Indonesia also in bilateral context, including the possibility not only of supplying vaccines, but also to discuss uh, localization of their production on Indonesian soil. Uh, we support uh, foreign policy of Jakarta, which is based on respect for international law. This is what Russia believes uh, should be done by all countries. Uh, and certainly, as I said, we'll uh, continue to coordinate uh, in various uh, international settings, including the United Nations, its specialized bodies. In very practical terms, we discussed today uh, such uh, topical area of international agenda as international cyber security. We are developing bilateral document, Russian-Indonesian agreement, uh, on cooperation and cybersecurity area. We also uh, coordinate closely in discussing this topic uh, uh, on the agenda of ASEAN Regional Security Forum uh, and in the United Nations, where earlier this year an important consensus was reached uh, to launch effective ne intergovernmental negotiations uh, to try to develop an international agreement, international convention, uh, on uh, um, the rules of responsible behavior of each country in the area of international information security, and another document which was agreed to uh, be subject to negotiations in the United Nations is a convention to fight uh, cybercrime, criminal activities in, in uh, cyberspace. 
we discussed specific regional situations. Uh, first of all, the uh, problems in the Middle East and North Africa, uh, with emphasis on the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, which we uh, believe must be resolved on the basis of existing Security Council and General Assembly decisions on the basis of the Arab Peace Initiative. We discussed the situation in and around Afghanistan uh, and the situation in Myanmar. We reiterated our strong support for the ASEAN Five Principles and uh, in our contacts with um, Myanmar uh, leaders, military leaders, uh, we promote the position of ASEAN, which should be, in our view, uh, considered as a basis for resolving this crisis and bringing the situation back to normalcy. We briefed uh, our Indonesian friends uh, about our messages which we sent to Naypyidaw, uh, basically in line with the uh, principles developed by ASEAN. We discussed the situation in Asia and Pacific. We underlined uh, that there is no alternative to the principles of ASEAN centrality. We underlined unacceptability of the attempts, which we unfortunately witnessed, to create some parallel mechanisms in the region to dig dividing lines uh, with active participation of non-regional players who are not uh, in the who don't intend actually to follow the principles which have been established by ASEAN and its dialogue partners during the last several decades. We are grateful to our Indonesian friends for having served as coordinator of Russia ASEAN dialogue partner for the last three years. Uh, this year we commemorate 30th anniversary of the relations between Russia and ASEAN and 25th anniversary uh, of launching uh, the strategic dialogue uh, with the uh, association. Uh, today, we, later this, this afternoon, we will uh, hold a video conference uh, with the ministers of foreign affairs of Russia and ASEAN, uh, including the ways and means to promote our strategic partnership. I invited uh, Retno Marsudi to come again to Russia, and I hope that this could be done uh, not far from now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sergio. Thank you very much.